So WordPress is a great platform for building a website, but out of the box, it's pretty limited on what you can do when you want to create something just that little bit more special. You can use something like Elementor Pro to expand your tool set, and in this video, I'm going to show you how we could do just that. We're going to create our own custom posts, we're going to assign those to a different page design, and we're going to use conditions inside Elementor Pro to be able to tap into those different layouts. So let's just jump into WordPress and take a look at how we can do all of that right now. I'm Paul C and welcome to WP Tuts, where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content as soon as it's added to the channel. Okay, so I've got a website that I've recently developed for a client, and if we take a look at it, it's just using Elementor Pro, nothing special, nothing you haven't seen before. Looks pretty cool, nice and simple, and in keeping with what I want to do. Now, if I go to the news section, we'll see we've got a typical news archive. So you can see we've got various different posts all pulled in using normal WordPress features, nothing special, and we've just styled it using uh, Ocean WP, which is the theme I'm using. So if we scroll over, click, you'll go in and you'll see a very typical kind of layout for a blog post or a news post. However, if we go into the artist section and take a look in there, we've got a completely different layout. If I click and go and take a look at any of these particular artist bios, you can see we've got a different layout again. This is all done using Elementor Pro and dealing with some of the conditions we can use with the templates that allow us to create our own custom pages, which we can then restrict to certain parts of our website. So I'm going to show you how we can do that very easily just using Elementor Pro. So I'm going to go into a different site and I'm going to show you how this is done. So for this example, I've jumped into a test website that I've used before, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new post category that we're going to assign to be authors. Now, this might be something that you have uh, contributors for a particular website, and you want to have their own dedicated pages. Well, this is one method you could use to do something like that. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to come into our posts, and we're going to come down to categories. In there, we're going to create a new category that we're going to then use later down the line to specify exactly what template we're going to use for the, those particular pages as opposed to the general sort of post template you have with WordPress. So let's just call this Authors. Uh, we'll say Add New Category. So we just assigned that now. So that's all we need to do at this point. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to Elementor and we're going to create a new template. So we're going to say My Templates. This is going to be a single post template. Now, the difference in a single post and an archive is the archive is the kind of listing of all the posts. A single is the actual template being used to display the post itself. So if we click on single, what we're going to do is we're going to come in and create a new post type in this. So we're going to say add new. You can see we've got some options in here. We've got single and select the post type we want to use. What we're going to do is we say single, where it says select, we're going to say post and we're going to say, give this a name. So we're going to call this Authors Page. So we're going to say Create Template. Once we've done that, that'll take us into Elementor where we can start creating our template design. So you can see we've got the option to choose any of the blocks that are part of our normal library. We can come into the pages, which are the templates, or we can come to My Templates and use something from there. What we're going to do is simply close this down and go straight into start editing the page itself inside Elementor. Okay, so we're just going to keep this a really simple idea. You can create as creative as you want with this. And I've covered this in a lot more detail about how we can create blog posts. So I'm not going to sort of spend a lot of time on this. I'd recommend checking that. I'll put the link in the description below so you can check out how to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to click and add a new section. And to start off, we'll pop at the top. In there, we're going to come in and search our widgets. And what we're going to do is say image. And what we can do is we can say featured image. So what we're going to do is we'll create the post type that will have the featured image of the author. Now, in this example, it's just pulling in some relevant data so you can see we get at least a picture in there. If you want to change that information what's being displayed, we can come down to the little eye icon and click on Settings. And in there, you can see we've got Preview Dynamic Content as, and you can see we can come in and choose from posts and pages and so on. And if we want, we could even come in and choose exactly which post we want to use. I'll leave it as is for now, but it's just there if should you need it. So we'll leave that, that's fine. Next thing we're gonna do is say add a new section and in there we're gonna put in a simple two column layout and we'll come back in and choose our post. And we'll say post content. 
we'll drop that in there that'll be the body of the actual content will go and then we could do on this side is if we wanted to we could put things like some social icons in there so like I say I'm not too bothered about what's going in I just want to show you the method that's being used to create this we'll set those to be left aligned and that looks pretty cool what I'll do is I'll just bring this over a little bit and leave it like so so we've created our basic template. We'll hit publish, and once we do that, it's gonna take us to and say, these are the display conditions. What do you want to do with this particular template? Now you can see it says, Element has recognized that you have set a location for the other template. Well, don't worry about that. We can always delete that template. What we can do at this point, though, is say all posts, and you see it says all. So in other words, any post will use this template if we assign it to that sort of category of everything. But what we can do is we can click where it says all and we can start typing in there. We can also come up to the post section and we can change it to that as well. So you can see we can come in and we can say in category, all posts, in tag, in format and so on. So let's just say we wanted to create a template for a specific tag. We could do that and then we can assign a tag to any post and that post then that uses that tag will be displayed using that layout. I hope that kind of makes sense. So what I say is in category, we're then going to drop this down and we're going to start typing in the category we want, which we know is author. So once we start typing that in, you can see it pre-fills that out and we can say authors. So we set a simple condition now that says if a post is in a particular category and that category equals authors, please use this template over any other template that might have been selected. You can see we can also come in and say include and exclude. So if we want to get really creative, we've got a ton of categories and we want to sort of limit things, we can use exclude if we want to, to make it quicker and easier. We can also come in and add additional conditions. So you can build up very complex conditions to use a template. Now I'm gonna leave it simple, like I've said, we're gonna leave in category of authors and click on publish. Once that's done, we're just gonna come out of this and we're just gonna come back in and create a new post that has the author associated with it. So let's come out of this, exit the dashboard. Let's come to our post types and say, let's add a new post type. We're gonna say, this guy's name is Billy Bob. And we're just going to drop in some text into this. We've got some bio text about that individual. We'll paste that in there. What we're going to do is we're going to come and select this category to be authors. So we'll click on that. And finally, we'll come and set the featured image. So I'm just going to choose an image in there that I think is relevant to the particular individual. And we'll go for this moody picture. Set the featured image. And we've pretty much done everything we need now. So let's just publish that. And what we can do now is we can go and take a look at the author page and see that it's now using a different template. So now that we've created the custom template for our author's post type, let's go take a look what it looks like on the actual site. So if I just jump over to the test site, you can see I've got a section on here that's now for authors. And if I click to go through to it, it's using the sort of the, the standard layout for displaying this inside a blog listing and just set it to the theme. So if I click on Billy Bob, you can see it'll take us in and show us the actual design that we created. It still picks up the top header because that's part of the theme design. So don't worry too much about that. So let's just jump back over. We can take this one step further. Like I say, if we take a look at this, we've got authors and it's just showing the normal listing. But also, if we come to the home page, you can see it also shows it with all the other categories of post types. Now, you don't necessarily want to do that. So I'm going to show you how you can create a custom listing like this and you can just show the only the post sections that you want or the only post type that you want. So let's just jump back into the template section. All we're going to do is create another new template. So let's say add new template. This time we're going to choose an archive. Enter the template name. We're going to say this is authors archive. So we'll know what it relates to. And we'll say let's create our template. Once we create the template, again, we're going to take over into Elementor. It's going to give us the option to choose any of the blocks. We could choose on the predefined, but we're going to close this down and choose our own. So again, add new section in there. What we're going to do is we're going to come down to posts, drag and drop that over into there. You can see this now immediately picks up the basic styling and so on. We can easily come in and change that. So let's set this to be cards, for example, and then give it pick up the styler we've already assigned. We can adjust lots of different things in here. I'm not going to go into detail about how we can do that. All I want to really show you is how we can easily come in and filter this to only show the sections that we want. So if we scroll down, you can see we've got the option for query. If we click on query, you can see at the moment it says all authors. The source is post. That's correct. What we're going to do, though, is just limit the categories that are going to be used. So once we click in there, you'll see it shows all the categories we have with posts assigned to them. And we're just going to simply choose authors. Once we do that, you can see it's going to get rid of anything that doesn't fit into the authors category or the 
author category of post types. So we click on publish. And again, you can see we get, where do you want to use this? So we can say add condition. We say all archives, but what we're gonna say is we want categories just to double check, just to make sure. We're gonna change this from being all, and again, we're gonna put this to authors. Click okay on there, and we're just gonna say publish. And as you can see, that's now saved the page out for us and all the styling is in place and only limiting it to just the author's category. So let's just jump over to the test site and take a look at this in action. So if I jump over to my test site, you can see there's all the styling we've already set up on the normal home page, but now I've done nothing more other than show you what I've just changed in the back end. Once I jump over to the author section, you'll see now that's picked up the exact styling and overridden the basic looking WordPress listing for those blog sections of the author. So again, we can very quickly and easily come in and assign custom sort of layouts to our posts of a specific category. And we can also then do the same thing for the archive listings for that same category. That means that we can get in and we can really customize the way things look. Now, obviously I don't have to stick with this. If I wanted to come back in and start adjusting and tweaking this layout, I can do just that. So if I come back in here and I just come into the styles, for example, We'll say card, we'll put a background color, we'll set that to be white. We'll make sure the picture is slightly different. So we'll come down to the image and we'll just adjust that slightly. We'll adjust the spacing on there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's look pretty cool. We'll just leave it like that. Just so you can see the sort of some of the differences on there. And if we want to, we can also say, well, let's make the avatar bigger and just tweak it. Just do whatever we want. So we'll hit update on there. Now, if we just jump back over to our test page, refresh that. You can see that's now picked up all the styling changes we just made. But if we jump back over to our home page, we'll see that all those changes are left out of this because it's using a different template. It's not using that archive template that's specifically set up to only target the author's category of post types. I hope that makes sense to you. So that's how you can very easily start to use these simple conditions, different templates, and you can pull those in and create different sections of your website that look different, but are using simple posts. You could easily use this method to get really creative. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how we can use the advanced custom fields plugin alongside this to create not only custom posts, but also the ability to be able to have custom fields that will only display when you choose a particular post type. And then we can use this kind of template structure and conditions to get really creative to make sure that each page has its own custom characteristics. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content. If you haven't already purchased Elementor Pro and you're considering purchasing it or any of the other tools that we use on these videos, please consider using the affiliate links in the description below. It costs you no more money, but it gives a small percentage back to the channel and helps support us and allow us to create more great content for you. As always, if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on anything we've covered in this video, please pop those in the comments section below. Let's get a conversation going and see how we can help each other to get great looking websites using these techniques. Well, until next time, take care.